No, thank you, honestly. Now you're the first soccer player from UIW to make it to professional. So, you know, how does that feel? Honestly, it's kind of still surreal. It's like a weird thing to like be like be able to accomplish this or accomplish what I'm doing right now because it's just something that I didn't really think I was going to be able to do. A lot of people say, oh, I'm going to go pro, but do they do it? Like, are you in the moment? And I'm like, in the moment now, I'm just like, wow, like, it's something that happened. It's awesome. I love it. It's, I'm so excited. I, I feel like, like no, no, it makes lots of noise. I can hear it just right now. It's okay. I feel like it happened so sudden, though. It was quick. Honestly, it was a process. It was quick, but slow. No. So, like, uh, when I graduated, when it was, what, 2019? Or, yeah, 2019, before the pandemic hit. Yeah. And um, what happened? I went to go do tryouts, and I went to Cruz Azul, I went to America, I did all these tryouts, and it's a long process. It's a overwhelming process, because you have to think about you're going to do these tryouts with these teams, and you have to give your 100% all these trials. It's like, maybe it can be like a seven-day a seven day trial, or it can be like a month trial. But you have to like give your like hundred percent because this is what this is what they're gonna see. Like they you need to give your all or else like hey like you're not gonna you're not gonna make it. So like I was doing all that process and then I was with Cruz Azul, twenty like early twenty twenty like probably January February somewhere around there, and that's when the pandemic hit. Stuff started closing and that's whenever the Liga Mekis was like we don't know what's going on so everyone just go back home. like just go home. Yeah. So they like sent all the teams back home and I went back I came back to San Antonio. And I was like, okay, what do I do now? Like, and here back because everything was still up in the air. Was was uh, the Liga gonna keep going? We didn't know. So I stayed home and I just kept grinding. I did what I had to do. I worked as much as I could to save money. And then I had another opportunity come like eight months later. And I went to Pumas and I got some tryouts with Pumas. And then they're like, hey, like, stay for this trial. We're gonna have a an amistoso, they call it. Uh, what do you call it? Sí, well, amistoso, yeah. Uh -huh. Friendly game, yeah. Friendly, friendly game. game. There you go. I see. I'll get my words on this stuff. No, but um, yeah, they, they said we're gonna have a friendly game against Toluca. Stay. We want to see. We want to see how you play. Man, I tell you, this was probably like a horrendous game I played because the uh -huh. altitude in Mexico City is crazy. It's like. One hundred percent. It's some people don't like. Some people don't like realize that it's such a big jump, but it's so bad. Like I'm just like I. I was like, man, I suck. I was like, this is worse. This is bad. Like you know, like I was like, this was bad. They're definitely not gonna want me. Cause honestly, from what I saw, like I could do so much better. Like I, my like I couldn't even run. I could not run. Like it was so hard. And when I um and some of the girls were talking, they're like, no, you did good. Like we, you liked your like your work ethic. We liked you like this and this. And I was like, are you sure? Me? You saw what you just saw what I did? You yeah. think this is good? No, like, it's the altitude. It's the altitude that sucks. Like it's it's gonna get you. It gets a lot of like girls that come and play. It's altitude. So I was like, okay, cool. So then they they ended up giving me an offer, Pumas, and I stayed in Mexico City. And the best thing was that my sister came as well. She came from America to Pumas. So we was, was able to play with my sister. So it was something really cool. A long process. Looked short, but yeah. it was like a long process and work. I don't know, the process is always long, you know, but yeah. we always see like the sudden jump, right, when you yeah. start like, you know, getting the, the success, right, or like yeah. your earnings, you know. But it's crazy because, yeah, I'm like, yeah, it was fast, and I was like, wait, was it fast? I was like, oh no, it was, it was not long. Like, sometimes I forget, I was like, it was a long process, but it was fast, it was quick. But the good thing is you kept with it, you know, during COVID, because not that many yeah. people would have probably kept up with it. It's, it was hard, especially because here in uh, San Antonio, the COVID all, the facilities closed, uh, a lot of things closed, so it was kind of hard to do like, you had to go like certain parks by yourself. You had to do things by yourself because you didn't know if someone had COVID. So it was like a big thing. So honestly, like it was, I, I still don't know how I did it. Mm -hmm. It's hard. And then some parks were even closed too. So you couldn't oh, even go to the yeah, parks. Yeah, no, honestly, they were. I probably was in my backyard and like in my living room. I'm pretty sure I broke like a lot of glass cups and plates. My mom did not like me that year. No? No. It happens to the best of us. So when you were playing in Mexico, did you ever play in the Azteca? Yes. Um, how was that? It was awesome. Honestly, the Azteca is such a... Because that's the that elevation over there, right? It's crazy. But the, like, when you get into the stadium, you it's like it's it's cold. It's like nice and it's like refreshing because it's just it's nice and cold. The, the grass is so nice. And then um, I was able to play an Amistoso with America because it was like um, it was a friendly game before season started just to kind of like for both teams to kind of get a, a little game in before the season starts. And... Um, 
I was able to play it for like 20 minutes or so, which was very, like, very, very cool. I loved it. It was, like I said, it was a surreal feeling. It's awesome because you see how many players have played in Azteca. Like, it's, it's so nice. It's so, so nice. The stadium's huge. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's just magical. I just say magical because I also got called up uh, to dress out for a game during season. And I dressed out with my sister that game. I didn't get to play, but I was on the bench. I was there. I was dressed out, warming up. I was looking at my team play and all that stuff. It was, and like being there with the fans, because this is whenever they allowed fans back in the yeah. in the stadium. Wow. And that game came back. We tied the game up with America, I believe, 2-2. And it was the craziest, like the fans yelling, like the lights. It was nice. It was a, it was a 7 a.m. A 7 p.m. game. It was at night. The lights were shining down. Like best feeling ever and I wasn't playing yeah and just watching it so I only imagine like playing that game wow I it was it was awesome I just loved it, it was, I love being there that's, a, that's, a, that's like a dream come true you know Maradona with uh, the man of it like all these players you're just like wow like they play here they like they, they did all the magic here and it's still on there you still feel it like you feel the magic when you walk in oh man yeah 100 percent so when you were like during the process was it something you always wanted like was it something you were manifesting Yes and no. I didn't think I was manifesting it, but I was in a sense because I was I was thinking about it and I was like, wow, like who thought you would be here? Like who would have thought you could have been here? And in a sense of manifesting it, I always said I wanted to go pro, but how was I going to go pro? What what was I doing to go pro? And I think uh, manifesting it in a way of like. I didn't know it, but I was, and that's when like where it hit me. Like when when did I want when did I want to like go pro? Mm -hmm. And I think it was just senior year of college when I kind of got into like um, I got into um, kind of like this this grind time. Like okay, like you really want to play because a bunch of people are getting ready to go to their jobs. They're getting prepared to go to, like go do whatever they they want to go do. While I was in college, and I was like, I still want to play. Like I still have some like gas in me. I still yeah. want to keep going. You know. So I, I don't know, it's just, I think it was just always there. I just didn't think of it as much, you know? But you kept working hard towards it. Always. I would always, I look back at it and I was like, maybe that's why I was so hard on myself. Because I wanted more. I wanted more than like, than like people around me. Like sometimes people are like, why are you pushing yourself so much? I was like, because I want more. Like I want, I want yeah. more. Like I want it. Like, you know, challenge me. I want to be challenged. And that's one of the things that, I, that's when I started beginning to see like, I want this. Like I want more of this. So how was like the level of competition from you know being a college student athlete to being pro? Um, technical. Very technical. Like very technical. It's all like mind. It's all your mind. It's, it's mind games. Cause um, necessarily like going pro, it's it, now it's just like getting. It's kind of like sharpening those fundamentals, sharpening right? Sharpening those all of those little things that you did, you thought that didn't matter, they matter now. The details, right? Your details, all your details come out to play like a bigger role. So it's like a crazy thing. And going into um, pro and not only pro in the states but somewhere else, uh, the difference in play, like playing here in um in the U.S. The play, like I only played collegiately um in the U.S. but I also did uh, semi pro in the U.S. And then going pro in Mexico, I saw the difference in how the play is um, here it's more like physical more speed athleticism, athleticism yeah which I, I had I had I, was, of course. I had it technically was rough I had to sharpen like I would go to Mexico and these girls are like doing these crazy moves their touch is perfect phenomenal I like these young girls like 14 15 16 year olds uh, selección they're like the uh, U17 selección for um, Mexico they're over here doing all these moves and they're, they're on Pumas they're younger girls and over here doing all these moves, I'm just like, whoa, you're good. Like, they're good. I'm just like, wow. Like, so the technical part of it, I think, is the biggest difference. It's huge. 100%. I think that if, we, if here in the United States, we focus more on technical than athleticism, if we could combine both of those, I think we would be, you know, lethal, right? On the stop. But that, that's going to take some time. It takes a bit, but I think they're starting to, I mean, both ways over there in Mexico, I think they need to focus as well, like, on the well, like kind of take and take each other's roles. Like Mexico needs to focus on the focus on the physical, the like being strong, being hard, and all that. And then here in the states, I think technical. When you get more technical on the ball and stuff, but from what that's what from what I saw, because that's what I was able to see and pick up on. Uh, people see differently, but that's what I saw. Just technical, technical. Wise. No, that makes Crazy. sense. So when you were over, 
Was language your, uh, was Spanish your first language? Yeah, Spanish yeah. my first language. Oh, okay, so like there wasn't really that much language barriers? Yes and no, because um, my Spanish is uh, not choppy, but it's like, it could be better. It's, yeah. um, because my Spanish is my Same. first language. Yeah, my parents only speak Spanish. They speak English, and I tell them, like, y'all know English. I'll just act like y'all know English. Just when the cheese is good, y'all know English, I tell them. Yeah. But, um, but they know, they only know Spanish, so I communicate with, with my parents in Spanish, so my Spanish is okay, but over there, um, they use different types of Spanish, like, like different um, slang words yeah. in Mexico City. My parents are from, my dad's from Durango, and my mom's from, um, from this place called Tafetan by Morelia, and um, so like they use like different, uh, different Sounds. slangs, so some, sometimes I'll be saying something, and over there, like, um, what would I say, what's the word I would say, um, Chiquillo, chiquillo, or um, what did I say? Uh, there's a word that they would make fun of me because I would use it all the time. They're like, "What are you saying? What does that mean?" I was like, "Y'all don't say it here." <laughs> They're like, "No, don't say that." I was like, "Oh, you're not Like, don't be not Like, they would tell me that's like that's not Like, you're like, you don't say that there. So it's like very. It's just funny how like words are different in all those areas. So uh, language wasn't that big. Wasn't that big of a very. My Spanish got better. Oh, of course. But my 100%. English got I think a little choppy. Because now, like, I have to turn off my switch, my Spanish switch, and turn on my English switch now because I'm using English more in the States. But when I was in Mexico, it was all Spanish. And the only time we speak English was with my sister or with, uh, like, there's a couple of uh, Mexican-American girls that speak English over there. So then I, like, have my switch on and off, you know, with some English. But now that I have my, like, I had to turn off my uh, Spanish switch a little bit more and talk in English. I mix up my words. Like, you hear me right now, like, say some words and I mess up. And you're like, wow, she doesn't know English. I was like, yeah, I don't. English. More power to you, though, right? You know, learning to do. A struggle. It's a struggle. <laughs> yeah. Was there a lot of? Was it like a big cultural shock when you were there? Um. Cultural shock. Um. Yes and no. Because my parents try to raise up and raise us in like the Mexican Latino. cultural, like the Latino, all this stuff. Like so. Yes and no. Like the food, ate it. My mom, everything my mom made for us, we ate it over there. So it wasn't, I don't think it was a big cultural shock. It would be different if someone wasn't Hispanic or Mexican went to there. Now, because I have like the roots, I kind of know, I know what to expect. I know what there is, but if you bring someone that isn't Hispanic at all, and you bring them over there, it's a big cultural shock. Yeah. So, and then I visited uh, Mexico a lot when I was younger, so it's not really a big cultural shock. Nothing new, right? No, nothing new, oh. nothing new. So when you were over there, was it more stressful being a professional soccer player or, profession, or, or a student athlete? Uh, college was stressful. Yeah, college was stressful. College was, oh my gosh, college was, I'm thinking about the assignments and then having competition the next day. I mean, you would track, same thing. You yeah, had a cross country and yeah. track, you know, so it was like. Mm -mm. I don't know how you did it. Props run. to you. I don't know how you did it. Mm -mm. Not me. I can't run. <laughs> don't enjoy it. Nope, not at all. But no, like, you gotta think about it. Like, we have an assignment due at 12 midnight. But before that, we have like trainings. So we have practice. And then we have class. And, and you practice in the hottest time of the day, by the way. It was hot. For no reason. You guys would always practice at the hottest time. And that turf would get hot. Mm -hmm. there, was a, there was a summer where it was like 103, no, 110 or something on the turf. They had like the meter on the, um, they had the thermometer on the turf and it was so hot. It was bad. I don't know. Ugh. But it was, it, I don't know. Being a student athlete, uh, anyone who's a student athlete knows it's a stressful thing. Because, I mean, if you don't play your student part, you can't play your athlete part. That's true. So... Maybe like there's a bunch of kids that do that are able to pay for the school because they're the athlete part, so they have to maintain both statuses. So it's like I don't know. It's just uh, I'm just thinking about all those assignments I had to do in college, and it was so stressful because then you had a game the next day, and you had you were stressed about that because it's a big game coming up, and man, it's they're different type of stress. I would say because. Now being a professional, a professional athlete, professional soccer player, it's, now it's my job. Like I need to show up 100% every day, trainings, what I eat, all the stuff. Like I have to be 100%, and if I'm not 100%, my outcome's not yeah. gonna be great. That's like your full time job. It's my full time job now. Like it's, I have no excuse. I can't, no excuse. So how's your lifestyle then for being a professional athlete? Um, it depends on like the team. So we train in the morning. So. Yeah. Probably around like seven, between seven and eight, we would start our trainings or so. So we'd get up at around six with, because my sister, me and my sister would live together. So it was great. It was great because 
we would never leave. We would always hold each other accountable. But um, go. Uh, we would wake up at six, make breakfast, and so our we would be like twenty minutes away from our um, from uh, from Cantera. I don't know if people know where Cantera is. It's a beautiful place. Puma's uh, little headquarters. Awesome. I don't know whoever on the viewers know anything, but Cantera is the best like facility I've seen. It's so beautiful. And if you don't know what Cantera is, I suggest looking it up. It is beautiful. It is amazing. And the fields, everything, all that, but anyways, it's beautiful. Anyways, going back into it. But um, I get sidetracked. But um, yeah, we would wake up, go to training, uh, either go get therapy, get taped up, um, anything you need to do beforehand, do your, if you've had pre-workout or whatever, because they have, we do a lot of pre-workout. Yeah. We, we do, we need to take a lot of proteins and stuff like that. So all that stuff. Um, then from there, we trained between... We started training around eight or so if we didn't have film before. So we had training at eight. We were trained for like two hours or so or more, depending on what we were working on. And then right after, kind of, kind of similar, we would do um, either weights one day and then uh, conditioning the next day, and then alternate weights the next day, training the, or conditioning the next day, kind of so. And then on um, game days, the day before a game would be more tactical, so it would only be like an hour. An hour long training session, simple. We would do more like tactical plays, set pieces, corner kicks, uh, free kicks, uh, any of that type of stuff. But that's basically it. We'd come home, I'd come home around, we'd be home around like 1 30, 2 okay. or so. We'd eat, we would either eat at the club, they would like um, give us some food, we would eat there. And then we'd come back home, either relax, shower, just get some downtime, take a nap. Naps are so important to me and my sister. Mm. So we'd come back home from like a long, especially in the heat. Ooh, in the train, oh. Elevation. It oh. knocks me out, bad. So I'll take like, we would take two to three hour naps. No lie. My then people were like, what do you do? You, all you do is take, you go to training, you take naps. It's like, yeah, you want to tra train like us? Like, we do a lot. And people, some people, some, some people say like, oh, y'all just, y'all just go to practice and y'all. Play. Like, I was like, no, there's a bunch of individual, like, indivisible work that happens. Like, we need to rest. We need to do our uh, therapy. We need to do extra sometimes. We need to, we need to, what we eat. All this stuff comes in play. And some people don't understand or don't know what comes in play whenever you're a pro. When you're a pro. And that's sometimes I'm just like, oh, those naps are important. Okay, people don't understand the discipline. That's what they don't get. Discipline is such, I don't know. For me, it's just, it's something I'm I'm getting better at as well. You can always perfect your discipline. You can you can never just oh I'm I'm disciplined. Be better. Get more disciplined. There's a way you can always be more disciplined. And that's something I'm learning right now. I'm getting better at my discipline work. So yeah, it's it's a lot of discipline, honestly. It's very big. I say the same thing as I'm drinking this beer, right? You know. It's alright. It's alright. Sometimes you need it. Of course. It's, of course. It's good for the heart. It's good for the heart. For the podcast, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but um. So when you're over there, how do you work on getting better outside of practice? Is there any side training you do or psych psychology, psychology work? So we have a psychologist on the team, which is very cool. On, even in college, you had a psychologist, and you can that go talk sense. to someone. So it kind, of, it kind of helped also in college that we had something like that. We had someone to fall back on. It would be Manny. I don't know if you know. Manny would always be yeah. there, Amanda. So it would be cool. Oh, you know. mm -hmm. Yeah, shout out to Manny. What's up? What's up? Hello. Anyway, you but yeah. Um, so we had a we had a, a psychologist there, sports psychologist, who would help us out if we ever needed it. Um, but yeah, extra. I would, honestly, I would do a lot of extra this last season, just trying to get better, trying to up my game. And uh, we do see a lot of girls that stay after either working on their shots, corner kicks, little things, their speed, their agility, extra weights. Like you see a lot of girls do that, and I think that's what sets a lot of girls apart. Is what are you doing that others aren't doing? Hundred percent. So I think yeah, it, honestly, the competition over there is crazy. It's big. Yeah, you know, because at the they can always replace you. It's a job. It's you, a ain't job. Doing your, you ain't doing your job. You're gonna get cut no. quick and quick. It's true. It, and it's crazy because you could have a job. Like honestly, I was with Pumas for a year. I, now I'm looking for somewhere else to go. I'm mean, now I'm looking for a different journey to go. And you, it doors open, doors close. Your contract might end. Uh, you might get cut. You, they might not have enough money to pay you. They might not have any room for you in the roster anymore like it's crazy it's so crazy how fast like your job can go 100 so it's like always being 100 percent, always being at your top because there's always people behind you trying to take your spot yeah 
I feel like uh, professional athletes invest their time on themselves because they're the investment, right? Yeah. So it's like you're on commission. You know, the amount of work you're putting in is what you're going to get out. It, no, big time. And I think coming back home and having, because I, I was trying, as soon as my contract ended with Pumas, I was, I was looking for a team because honestly, that's how it is. Your contract ends, you have to go look for another team yeah. or teams come look for you. And I had a short period to like go bounce back and find another team. And I wanted more minutes. Because it's hard, it's hard, it's hard waking up every single morning, going to training, go doing all the stuff that you want to do, and then not getting playing time. And it's very hard, mentally, emotionally, drained me. I was drained. I'm not gonna lie. It's hard being, it's hard being an athlete. It's hard being because you're doing all you can and you don't get any playing time. It's hard mentally. I think that's I coming back and like reflecting on it. Like I think I needed this like little step off to kind of like evaluate where I am mentally. Yeah. Do I need to be more disciplined then? Am I not doing what I need to be doing? Am I not getting 100%? Mentally, am I, am I there? Because I thought I mentally I was there. Was I not there then? You know? It, but it could also be too, you know, that different shift in like, you know, countries literally. Like, you know, you, you had a different style in America where you focused mostly on your physical work, right? But now you gotta transition that over, which probably give you a head start, you know, physical wise, with yeah. that foundation. You know, that's where you need to work on it. Especially in Mexico, that's what they really focus on too, is yeah. the technical stuff, Latin no. American countries. It's Literally different. everybody but us. <laughs> it's different. It's different because they, they I mean, yeah, they're looking for a different style of soccer. So you're coming and bringing something else to the table, but maybe it's not something they can work with yet, yeah. you know? So it's something that I also need to evaluate on myself. Like, I need to get, I need to step up my technical game because if I don't step it up, where, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go, you know? So I think well, that's one of the biggest things uh, coming back is I need to up my mental game. I need to up my discipline. Even though I thought I was up, I can get higher. Like, I can get better at my ment mentally. I need to be stronger. Yeah. And going into this job, it's a job. People go, oh, you're pro, you're pro. No, it's a job. Yeah, it's pro. Cool. It's nice. I get to play the sport I love and get paid for it. Who gets to say that? That's true. You know, it's crazy, but... People I mean, dream about it. It's a dream for everyone. People say it all the time. Yeah. And... I'm living it, and now I have to be like, okay, what am I doing to live up to being a pro? Mm. Gotta level up. I gotta level up. Not even just being pro. I want to be better. I want to be more than pro. You know, I want to be great. What am I doing to be great? And that's the biggest question. It's like, are you? A lot of people are comfortable just being average. I'm comfortable. I'm here. I'm pro. Cool. But then I'm just like, no, I want to be more. Like, I don't want to just be a pro player. I want to do something. I want to be someone. I want to create something I want to do something with myself you know so I think that's what I'm on the journey of doing right now so I think it's just super cool that's good I like hearing that I'll tell you what I think here too though we do have that like that willpower of wanting more you know we're like I feel like we're kind of taught that at a young age yeah. somewhat well honestly as a, as a young age is like wanting more it's challenging yourself like you have to want to challenge yourself if you're not challenging yourself who is yeah. it's a big thing and also surrounding yourself with people who challenge you it's not surrounding yourself with just a crowd of people. You want to have people in the same like kind of realm that you are because they're gonna push you. If I see you doing great things, man, I wanna, I wanna be, I wanna be like you. I wanna be greater. Yeah. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah. Exactly. So um, that's what I'm saying. I was like, you know, like see who you're around. Are they contained? Like, are they contagi contagious? Contagious. Contagious. There you go. And but do you want that? Do you want the same thing? If that makes sense. So that's one of the biggest things I started seeing is like. I started dis distancing myself from people where I'm just like, do I need you? Are you benefiting me? Yeah. But not like in a selfish way, but not in a selfish way. I need you to give me something in return. Like, what are you, yeah, what are you bringing to the table? Our conversations have to have something. They can't just be like meaningless conversations. Like whenever I talk to you, I have to have, get something out of it. I'm not just going to talk nonsense to you. Why would I talk nonsense? Where are we going? Yeah. We have to look at our time as value. You know, value. friends as value. That's one. Value and joy, though. I would say value and joy because you have to. We all want joy, yeah, too. That's you know, true. that's true. But I, that's a, when time and value. You saying time? I think the other day, because I, I wake, I go to work or seven, come like get off by like three, four or so, and from there I go coach. I'm doing coaching because I'm gonna get my coaching licenses. It's a great, it's a great way to go because I'm at the pro. I went to the pro level for a year. I can coach, but I'm gonna get my coaching licenses now. That makes sense. 100%. So I'm doing coaching and um, I got home like around like 11.30. I got into bed like at 12, 12.30, eating you know, cereal or something, whatever, staying in bed. And I was like, man, like 
I wish I had more time in the day. Like, I wish I could do more stuff. I want more time. That's when I realized, like, my time is valuable. What am I doing with my time? And do people that get my time, do they deserve my time? So that's when I started being more selfish. Like, who gets my time? Who gets me? Because I don't have enough time, man. Yeah. I realized that. I was like, man, I want more time. It's crazy that you said that because I was like, that's so true. That's what we value the most in life is time. Mm -hmm. You know? Can't get it back. <laughs> no, I'm man. getting old over here. My knees, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel, I feel young still, though. You know, I feel like 25, like, I feel like we're at our prime still, you know? I'm 23. You're young. You're, you're not tricky. warming up. What are you talking about? You're barely warming up. But hey, no, soccer does take a toll in the in the joints and it's crazy, honestly. People are like, yo, you're so young. It's like, oh my body feels like it's like it's in its forties. <laughs> I think being a student and athlete creates more of that stress though too. It does. A lot of people don't don't get it. Being a student athlete, not only are you have to study, but you also have to play. Yeah. You perform. also have to train. Perform. perform. You can anyone can play. You gotta perform, you gotta show up and perform. And some people want it. They want both things, but it's so hard to attain. I see people stressing themselves out. Oh, I don't know, nurse doing nursing when I receive these medical, nurse, yeah. medical, anyone medical field. Oh my, I would see them in the library. It would be 12, 30, 1. I'm like, I'm leaving. When are you guys gonna leave? Like, you know, like, when is that? When are you guys gonna go? They're over there like, just study. I'm just like, oh my gosh. And then I know that they're student athletes. That one of them, like, I forgot who it was. I don't know who it was, but I saw them every day. I was like, dude, you have training. Like, at six, don't you? Like, what are you doing here? I got to study. I got, a, I got an exam tomorrow. It's like, but you got training tomorrow, too. Imagine that. I was just like, the stress. Oh, the stress of being a student athlete. Flashbacks, it scares me, because I remember how stressed I was because of it. I didn't think I was going to graduate. Graduated early, and I said, oh, my gosh, I did it. Yeah, I, I was I was on that yeah that verse too. I was a little worried, you know. But it's scary. It's a cool. scary feeling, especially because you're like, oh my gosh, am I gonna graduate? Like, is am I am I even gonna walk the stage? <laughs> it was crazy. But oh. it's the it's probably one of the greatest feelings ever though too. It is all that work. Mm -mm. Student athletes, little shout out to everyone over there. Student athletes, hundred percent. Yeah, student athlete too, right there. Chief high rope. Yes, sir. Let's go. Yeah. So in Mexico, when you play in Mexico, how do they treat the women compared to the men? Um. More support. There is support. More special treatment. Um, it's still it's the what it's the Liga's like fifth year for fifth women. Year, I would say fifth so. year or so for women. So it's building. The men's had how many years? Like to develop. Yeah. To develop the women's is the women's side is just developing. So it's we're getting the support. Even like um, talking to some people, we get the support, but it's still it's still there. It's, it's it needs improvement. It needs to be improved. Anywhere it needs to be improved. Here in the States, it's just getting better. It's just like, it's barely going up, you know? The minimum pay stuff is just finally balancing out. Uh, but how long did it take here? Yeah. Imagine over there, it's, it's, it's still up and it's still developing. It's the support over there for women, it's, it's growing. It's getting bigger, yeah. But it's still, it needs more work. We need to work more for it. I think it'll take time, but you know, especially in Mexico, I feel like it may be more, a little bit more difficult. Yeah. You, know, you, you need a lot of marketing too. A uh, lot of marketing. A ton of marketing. But the good thing is, honestly, the fans help with the marketing a lot. We have a Always. lot of fans like that support women like playing soccer. Uh, it it it's crazy because there there's a lot of fans out there that love women's soccer. Like, they love watching just these strong women play. Like it's awesome watching these little girls come out to the games with their jerseys and everything. It's awesome. It's awesome. But the support, it's, I think it's getting there. It's getting there. It, it'll develop. I, yeah. I saw the different pay rates. So that was crazy. I think like the the most expensive girl, uh, female athlete, gets paid like twenty six thousand US dollars. I think something like that. Yeah, in the states though. So yeah, I'm with going to Mexico and seeing it's still big. It's such a bottom drop. It's not. You don't get paid much. No. no. Like I was like a thousand right a month, something like that. That's what I read, something like that. Just, it just depends on who you are. That's true, that's true. And how old you are. Are you a young one? Or are you an older one? Or are you an old, like... So age matters too. Age matters as well. The older you get, the less, right? Um, the less value? It or depends. It depends, honestly. The older you get, but you might be older, but you might be still breaking ankles, mm -hmm. you know? So you still, you're going to get paid because you have experience now. And you're breaking ankles at what? 30? 35? The oldest, I think, player in, in the Liga Mekis is... 
just a piece. Somewhere around there. The youngest players range from like 14, 15, 16 year olds or so. Playing with pro players that are like in their 20s, 30s, like they're like thrown in there and they're great. They're doing great. I mean, you see Slatan too and Mbappe, like that's two different age gaps, right? But they're still, they're still I mean, they're producing they're, like monsters. Oh no, that's, that's scary. Just thinking about the, like how big, how like it's growing. Like, I don't know, I don't know it's just, it's crazy how it's developing and how great it's getting. I think we're getting healthier. We're getting smarter on how to treat our bodies. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a better, that's a better. I, no, but we, no, we, we are getting healthier, but yeah. because we are learning how to treat our bodies, we have more technology to preserve our muscles, to preserve our bones, to preserve like our health. Or doctors too. Or doctors. Science, yep. everything. It's crazy because people, I think I teach this to my kids right now that I'm coaching. I was like, y'all need to warm up properly. Like, y'all need to stretch. Like, y'all understand, like, if y'all want to go pro, y'all can't, you guys can't have ass stuff. You guys can't have ass y'all's warm up or your cool down. Even though, like, whenever I, in, like, in my mind in middle school, I was just like, I don't need to warm up. I'm warmed up. You know, you then know. looking back and I was like, I was dumb. Like I, like, I wish I had warmed up properly. I wish I would have had a coach that told me, like, dug at me, like, you need to warm up properly. Like, what are you doing? You know, but then again, was that at that time, was I thinking about going pro? It also depends on the coach, too, I, I would say. Because, I mean, in track, we were programmed to train, like, to, yeah. like, really focus on warming up. You know, because the way you warm up is also the way you're gonna perform too. Yeah. It's a, if it's a half pass warm up, you're gonna have a half pass race. Yeah. No, it's I mean, especially y'all. Y'all is just like seconds, seconds determine you guys. Depends. The, it's long distance, yeah. yeah. Long distance. But still, those yeah. seconds. Those second, every second counts. Every second counts. You're right. See, I'm saying for you guys, I don't know how you guys. Y'all, y'all's time is so short, but it's so long. Y'all's warm up like has to be good. The warm up is longer than the race. That's true. The warm up is longer than the race, hundred percent, and it's it's a real mental battle. That's like a that that sport specifically is a real mental battle. Yeah, no, I think that's the biggest thing. Like warm up, warm up. Yeah. I think I think taking care of your body is a big game changer nowadays. <sighs> cooling down too. I need to start cooling down more. I need to stretch. Yeah. I mean, people, if you're, you can't stretch right now while you're doing it, your body needs it. Hundred percent. Oh yeah, we need to stretch. Little stretch. Honestly. Little quick little little stretch around. No, but honestly, I think the technology nowadays uh, for recovery is crazy. It's so, it's getting better. And I think that's why athletes are lasting a lot longer. Out of the athletes, who do you admire? Who helped you, you know, lead you to like playing soccer and wanting to be great? Coaches, players, family. I don't know, I don't even know how to explain like who exactly, but like, um, honestly, I think it'd be like my sister, Molly Pampa. Um, she helped me a lot. She helped me get to where I'm at in a sense of like, not only pushing me, but like also reminding me like who I am. Like remember like who you are, don't let, cause you get, I mean, you get a lot of criticism. You're on, you're on like a platform. You get a lot of criticism, you get a lot of hate. I mean, I saw it from my sister. She got a lot of hate on bad games, you know, everyone has a bad game, what do you expect, you know? And you get a lot of criticism out there, but it's always reminding you, it's that mental game that we're talking about, like being, being strong. Like you're playing this game and you have a bad game and you think that's like the worst game of your life, you're gonna have another bad game probably. And just that mental game, honestly, and I think my sister really helped me through that. I think that's like one of my biggest, I admire her a lot. I admire her worth, I think I admire her, like her whole self. I think that's my sister, yeah. That's awesome, is she the sister, right? No, it's my big sister. Oh, your big sister. I have a younger one too, she's, she's fire, my old sister. Yeah. But my older sister, yeah, she's, my sister's 20, 28, 28. I'm sorry, I'm running, I don't know how old you are. <laughs> And then my younger one's 19, and then I have my brother, he's 24. Okay. Yeah, we're the closest to me. But now I think it's my older sister. And also the friendships I built along the way. I have a handful of girls in Mexico City that had my back throughout everything. And they're, they're players that had a lot of experience. I would say like a good handful of girls, I think I admire it so much their worth ethic and I take little pieces of them and I'm like, oh, I want some of you. I want to be like you. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take what you can give me, you know? So, like, they're teaching me how, in a sense, to be better. So I take little, little like, little things from each and every one of them. Like, okay, I can do this better. Like, I can be like this. You know, I want to do this. So I think, honestly, I'm just, I admire all the people around me that have supported me and not, like, given up on me. So that's the biggest thing. You need your support group behind you. 100%. You know, I like what you said. You gotta, you gotta put tools in your toolbox, you know, mm -hmm. and craft that out. That's yeah. good. That's 
true. And you can do it by yourself either. I feel like you're a product of like the people who've like played a factor in your success. A lot of people played a factor. A lot of people said, yeah, I did, I did it, okay, I built. But who was there holding me up while I was building? You gotta think about it. And then now, now, like, I'm fine. now I'm standing up straight. Now I gotta maintain, but also remember like, who, who are my roots in a sense? But we also remember like, I did, I did the grinding. Like I worked, I worked for this. It was, it was me that wanted this. It's me that made it happen. But I had a lot of people in the background help me out. That's true. You did want to, you did say something earlier, man. I did want to touch up on it. You said like, you know, how would you get mad at yourself? You know, that, that form of shaming, right? Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? A little bit of both, honestly. It's a little bit of both. I mean, you have to get mad at yourself. Because then, like, in a sense, you can do better. Like, I tell myself, like, I think I had a really bad training session. Like, my pass were off. And I will get mad at myself. I'll be like, what are you doing? Like, these are, like, five-yard passes. How can you not commit a five-yard pass? I'm getting mad at myself. And then I have to remember, like, snap out of it. Like, you can connect these five. You have to get mad at yourself sometimes to be better. You have to, like, okay, what am I doing wrong? Why are these five pass, five-yard passes not getting there? Oh, maybe my plan code. Maybe I have too much force. Maybe I'm my knee isn't locked. Maybe so. Like you have to think about what is making these passes not connect. So sometimes it's like, okay, be mad at yourself. How can you fix it? 100%. In a sense. So not necessarily stay mad at yourself, but what can you do to fix the problem? And then you have to be mad at yourself. And you gotta think really deep on that too. Big. It's like those internal factors, huh? Oh, oh my gosh, a lot. Honestly, I think that I'm learning a lot of that too. It's um, not necessarily being mad at myself, but like. What can I do? What can I do to change certain things? Why would I? What can I do to change the way I kick a ball? What can uh, What can I change to make the ball dip a little to the left, to the right? Like, what can I do to change? I think that's one of the biggest things. Yeah, there's a lot of angles to it. A lot, honestly. Still learning. Yeah. Still learning. But that's good. You know, you gotta. Like, I'm, I'm assuming you're still keeping it up, right? And everything. Yeah. yeah. No, I have to. It's a must. It's a must. You have to keep up on, like, like I said, like the little details. My passing has to be sharp. My, my touches have to be sharp. My skills have to be sharp because why? I can go get called to go do a tryout right now. I can get called right now and be like, I gotta go. I cut this and be short. They're telling me to fly out right now to go to a tryout. You know? So that's what I'm saying. Like you always have to be sharp. Right now, I just right now it's just all about sharpening all those little details that I can sharpen. Yeah, I like the way you said that. That means, that means you really truly love it, right? Because you, once once you oh, once you get that phone call, it's you're a love. It's a love hate. Cause I'm just. Those days where you're like, man, it's cold outside. I'm, so, I'm so sore. What do I, do I want to do? Why, why am I playing? Why do, why do I do this? Cause I love it. Why do I get up? Cause I love it. Even though like those days where I'm just like, man, I don't want to train. You, you guys go out those days where, like, I don't want to go to work. Yeah. I gotta go. I gotta go. Those days where you don't want to go are the days, the most important days where you have to go. You have to go to those days. Those days where you. You just don't want to even talk to anyone. You gotta go. And you those are sometimes go. the best days too. Yeah. The most unexpected days are sometimes the best days. Yeah. I've had those days, you know. And you're about to think about it, like, how's I gonna get up this morning? But you know, sometimes I think I'm too. Uh, maybe I'm a little too harsh on myself. So I'll be like, I gotta stop being a bitch. As soon as I say that, I flip. You know, and I just I, I flip the engine and then boom. You know, you I, I get to it. Yeah. Sorry, well, you gotta you gotta start, you know, like, all right, you, you can do this. Because you have to say you have to you can't deny it. Sometimes you're just like, man, I'm tired. Say it, I'm tired. But it's that person in the back, you gotta get up though. You still gotta go do what you gotta do. You know? Because yeah, at the end of the day, someone else is gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And someone else is doing it right now. Yeah. Someone right now could be working out right now. 100%. And exactly, and that's why I worked out for the second someone who worked out. Of course. Hey, <laughs> all, all you're doing right now is developing your communication skills, eh? Yep, I gotta work on it. I do need to work on it. We all need to work on it. That's true. My English. But I'm pretty sure that's helped you too, though, like be more communicative, right? Because in, in soccer, I'm pretty sure in Mexico, you really do communicate as you play, right? Oh, you need to communicate every second, all the time. And I think a lot of people don't understand. Sometimes you don't, Sometimes some people communicate with their hands, with their gestures. You have a lot of bunch of people that communicate, like kind of like what people, they lead, they lead by example. There's players that lead by example, so they don't really need to talk. But you know what they're saying just because they do certain things. And there's players that are very vocal. And I think for me, Communication is so big. It's so huge and um, I'm learning about like more about communication more as I like develop and now being a coach as well. Now I get mad at my kids, it's like how do you talk to each other? How do you not talk to each other? It's so like it would be so much easier if you guys would talk to each other and then I'm like I should have then I should be talking to my 
my actual teammates then. Next time I'm on the field, I'm going to say certain things to help them out better. And I think that's what coaching, when I got into coaching, I kind of saw a different angle of things. I'm like, wow, that's what, that's what they say that. They don't just, uh, like I said, they don't just say stuff to say stuff. But you know what I mean? I saw like, a whole different angle, and I was like, man, I need, I need to talk more. I can, I can talk more. And, you know, I've seen some pros, too, where they communicate, like, when they make set plays, they communicate by doing sign language, right? Like, just doing, like, some type of, like, you know. Some like, little movement. Some like, some, yeah. some players are connected so well. Like, there's some players that just know each other and they play off each other so well. They're not even that sync. They just, they just know by a certain run, by a certain little little shit that oh, I'm going to play a three ball. I'm going to play a, a ball over. I'm going to chip it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a little movement, side step. I don't know. There's some players that are crazy that know how to, how to read people. They're it's awesome. That's all I'm going to say. We got some great players out here, and oh my gosh, it's crazy. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. There's people that just they talk with the ball, with the ball talk. It's crazy. Yeah. That's very true. No, I, I don't know who your favorite soccer player was, but I almost turned around to you. Turned around to you? No, yeah. Turned around to you. The way he would. He just dances. With the ball. No, he just dances with the ball, man. He just sways with it. He, it just leaves his own. Like, oh. He made love to that ball. Honestly. It's magical every time I watch it play. Yeah, it's something else. It's you just even though it's for a short span, what it was for that short yeah, span what did he was do amazing. With that, like with that time, he made it. He made it crazy. He made it look so like just fluid, so easy with it. It's so I don't know. It's looking at all his his playing time, all his little clippets and all that stuff. I'm just like, it's art. It's, no, it's literally art. I'm just like, I want to be you. Like, can I be you? Can, be, can I be you? And that's where I sat and work on my technical stuff. <laughs> And we'll get there. Yeah, I'll get there. We'll get there. Well, I'm glad you, you came to this podcast. Thanks for having me. No, this was honestly a great conversation. I know. I feel I feel good. I, honestly, I was thinking, I was like, man, there's so much, there's so much more we can dive deeper, like deeper into this. But oh, man, it was so awesome just to get all these. It's just thinking all. I mean, stuff. is there something you want to say? Like, please. No, I, say, I, don't know. I hope my head always runs to the truth. My head's always running. I have. I have so much to say, but I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what to say. Hey, hey. <laughs> um, speak it. Speak it. I don't know. It's just. One hundred percent. I think it's just whoever wants to do this professional journey is just grind, grind. There's always time to grind. There's always time to perfect your craft. So look for ways to perfect your craft, whether it's watching film, whether it's working on your detail work, whether it's I don't know rest, maybe recovery, maybe you need to work on your recovery time. I think just work on ways perfect your craft you know I think that's what two important things is like this is what I do and I think this would help like a lot of people is one um like when you're eating if you're eating by yourself go on YouTube and watch what you like and like for instance if you you know you're eating watch some soccer and two what you're doing on the weekends because that's what matters a lot too is those weekends I think that's what separate that's what separates a lot of people too I've been, I've, I've been wanting to do a lot of more reading but I don't have time so I've been doing audiobooks I already finished three, four books in like a month. And I'm just, I'm like, I love it. So that's a way I was like, I'm gonna start reading, but sometimes I don't have time, honestly. And that's what I'm saying, like, I was like, but I have time when I'm at work, I can listen to some, I can listen to it. I'm like, you know what, let's do it. So there's certain ways you could kind of figure out, you can't do it this way, you can do it another way. Huh. So that's the thing I figured out, I'm into audiobooks now. It's good. Yeah, I love it. I like the action of reading, because I, I didn't read a lot when I was young. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll tell you what, sometimes I think grammar's terrible. Yeah. You know, that's crazy. Because I've read a lot of papers, right? Oh, I'm, I'm looking back at my college papers. <sighs> developing, though. Developing that skill, right? But you have to read. Like, I, I specifically have to read. Because I'm always listening. Mm-hmm. You know, I listen to podcasts. But I need to start, like, doing that action of reading. See, and I tried. But I would get, like I said, I would get home around, like, 12. And I'd be like, I don't, mm. I don't have time. I need to go to sleep. Like, yeah. I don't wake up early tomorrow. So then I, I try to read, and then I fall asleep. Reading is something tough for me. But like, it's hard. I feel like I have ADHD sometimes. No, it's hard. That's why I say reading is hard, and that's why I was like, you know what? Yeah. I can implement it in audiobooks. Let's do audiobooks. No. But honestly. It's that, it's that level of focus, right? Yeah. No, it is. It's difficult. Yeah. Well, is there any last things you want to say to the people? Oh, I want to... To the fans? For, to the fans on Instagram? I want to say thank you to all the fans, all the Pumas fans, all the Campa fans that have followed me through my journey. Because honestly, I wouldn't be here without them and their support. Thank my family, thank my friends, everyone out there that has supported me. And I'm honestly getting back in touch with my roots. I love seeing old faces that I haven't seen in a while. And it's so fun to like catch up like nothing. So it's, it's awesome. Of course. Awesome. But thanks, everyone out there. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Of course. All right. Thank you. Thank you.